Hello, right, we're going to look at story massage this morning and um, story, incorporating story into massage telling isn't a new thing, but two clever ladies who were involved in education and also involved in massage decided to make it into sort of almost a brand. So if you Google story massage and go to the website, that's their website. Um, so what they've done is they have produced this book, which is called Once Upon a Touch. And it goes through how you can do um, storytelling and massage. And you can use this in lots of different ways. And um, you can use massage as you wouldn't, you know, normally um, to relax children. But because you're incorporating the storytelling element to it, you can also um, incorporate obviously the storytelling. So you can alter what you're doing in your massage with the words that you're using um, for different purposes. So you can get the children ready for bed, but you can also get them ready for new experiences and obviously at the moment difficult times at the moment you could use it to sort of explain different things through the massage to relax them so if i just tell you a little bit about the book here so story massage there are 10 different strokes and each stroke has a different symbol that goes with it which you can see here so this for instance is the wave and this is the symbol so when you are looking at a story massage you can look at a story uh, and, the, and the, the book has various different ideas uh, and they have a symbol that goes next to the written words. And so you do that massage stroke with those words. So what we're going to do today is we are going to go through the different massage strokes. So I'm going to demonstrate them on Rosie and then I'll go through them twice. So if you're doing this with somebody, you can obviously, if you've got, you know, if you've got a child with you, um, you can do this as a little thing together. So you choose who's going to do it first. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll switch it round so that, that you can do it on the other person as well. If you've got um, more, more than one child doing this with you just now, what you could do is you could have, you could sit one person in front of another. Um, and if you were doing it in a, in a group setting in a school or if you've got brownies or something like that, you could sit the children in a circle uh, and they could do it on one another. Obviously, it's a good opportunity um, to sort of talk about um, their right to say no and, and it's their body and body autonomy. So with story massage, we always start with saying, would you like a story massage? So would you like a story massage, Rosie? I suppose I do. <laughs> <laughs> You've um, told me I do. <laughs> um, and at the end, you then thank them for letting you do the story massage. So obviously, if you're doing it with a group of children or with your own, it's obviously a good opportunity to have a little discussion about that. So, seeing as Rosie is happy to have a story myself, <laughs> um, we're going to go through the different strokes. So what I'll do is I'll ask Jack to just pan down onto the book to the stroke uh, and then to look at what I'm doing on Rosie. So the first stroke is called the circle. So that's the, the, uh, what it looks like. And you're just putting one hand on the shoulder and with the other hand you're just going round in a, in a circle. And depending on the story, you can do it as a half circle for a moon or something, or you can do it as a half circle that way. So that's the first stroke. So if we then go on to the next stroke, and the next stroke is called the wave, and this is the symbol here for the wave. So the wave can be done down the back, it could be done up the back, it could be depending on what it's been used for in your, in your story. Uh, again, having the one hand sort of anchored on the shoulder. And then you can do it sideways. So obviously if it's like a wave in the sea, it would be more appropriate to do your wave sideways. And obviously you can vary your speed and pressure depending on the story. So the next one is called the fan. So this is the symbol for the fan. It can go up or it can go down. So with the fan, we're using two hands and we're going up and over the shoulders like that. Again, speed and, and direction can depend on what your story is doing. So you could come down. So if you're coming down a slide or something, that would be good for that. And the next stroke, we've got the walk. So with the walk, we're just going to take the hands. Sorry, Jack, did you get to? Yeah, yeah I... you got the walk. So with the walk, we just we can walk the hands up. 
you can walk the hands down. Now we're choosing to do this on the back. Obviously, depending on, on your child and the situation, you could, you could do this on other parts of the body. You could even do it on the hand uh, as a little exercise on the hand to do it as well. Um, so the next one we're doing is the drum. And with the drum, you're, you're getting your hands in a fist and you can either do them this way, which I find more comfortable, or this way. Um, and you're just going to drum on the back, obviously, with, a relatively, with some pressure, but obviously not so that it's uncomfortable. So they can be both hands together or they can be separately. And you obviously want to avoid going on the spine. So it's sort of on either side. Down like that. Then our next stroke is the claw. Um, and the claw is just making your hands into a claw shape and you're just dragging down like this. Now this one could be quite nice on the head, which we can't really demonstrate on Rosie because she's got her hair up in a bun. But this would be quite nice on the head if you can imagine that as well. Go down like that. And then we've got the squeeze. So this is the symbol for the squeeze. And the squeeze is just putting your hands on the shoulder or wherever you're doing the massage and having a nice little squeeze. Just repeating just a squeeze and a release. You could go down the arms if you wanted to. But we're going to be on the shoulders today. And then we've got the bounce. And the bounce is this symbol here. And this is a sort of a motion like this. So you're sort of opening your hands and then you're bringing them in and you're doing it as a bounce. And again, that could go on their hair, their shoulders. And again, different pressures and speed depending on what they're doing. Then we've got the sprinkle. So the sprinkle is getting both hands if you just look at this hand, because my right hand doesn't work properly, so I just do it with the one hand. But if you've got two working hands, if you do it with two hands, you're just going to sprinkle. And that again could be down the shoulders and could be on the head as well. So that's the sprinkle. And then the last one is called the calm. So that's just the two hands is a symbol for the calm. And we just lay the hands flat on the back like that okay so we're just going to quickly if you if you're doing this with someone if you just swap over if you just swap over and uh, if you look at me oh, uh, if you just swap over i don't think we don't need to look at the symbols again this time but what we'll do is if you just watch me um we'll just go through those uh, quickly again so that the second person can have a go with those so if you just ask your person that you're, if you've swapped over, if you'd like a, a massage, uh, and then we'll have a go with those. So we'll go through them again. So we've got the wave. Going down or going across. And then we've got the fan coming up. Or the fan can come down. Then we've got the walk and the walk, just patting, patting the hands over the back. Then we've got the drum, so either side of the spine, we're just going to drum with our fists a little. Then we're going to do the claw, so just using the, the pads of our fingers, bringing those down. And this has been designed so that it can be done over clothes, which makes it a good activity to do with groups of children and things. But at the end, we can talk about how you can do it as a more conventional massage as well. And then we've got the squeeze. So just having a bit of a squeeze of those shoulders. Squeeze and release, squeeze and release, squeeze and release. And we've got the bounce, 
keeping those fingers wide and then bringing them in and just bouncing them off. In the sprinkle, so using two hands, just sprinkling the fingers. And if you're happy, if your partner's happy too, you could go up onto their head with that one as well, and down their shoulders and arms as well. And then we have the last one, which is the calm. So those are the strokes that would, so uh, to give you a, so you know that all the different strokes that you can use. And what I thought we'd do is I would demonstrate some stories. One of them I'm taking from the book and the others that I've got from elsewhere. Uh, and what we'll do, if that's okay, Rosie, are you still happy? Are you feeling relaxed now? Yes, of um, course is that I'll demonstrate it on Rosie and if Jack just films what I'm doing on on Rosie then you could follow along and and do this this one with the person you're doing the massage so seeing as it was St George's day the other day we are going to do St George and the dragon okay you all right Rosie yeah so with the claw there once lived a fierce dragon with scary claws and teeth dragon terrorised everyone in the land. He, when he was angry, the dragon spat flames of fire from his great mouth. And when he was hungry, the dragon swallowed young maidens into his great big belly. One day, a princess cried, please don't eat me. I will save you, said St George, arriving on his horse. St George bravely struck the dragon with his spear. The dragon roared and spluttered poison over St George. They fought and fought. all through the day and all through the night until silence fell upon the land. St George had dread slayed the dragon. The young princess was saved. Everyone danced and cheered terrible dragon is dead. They all gave thanks to brave St George. There we go. So that's one example of a story you can do. So obviously you can incorporate um, the story massage into sort of traditional stories and traditional nursery rhymes. Um, you can also, you could also incorporate it into something that your children are learning. Um, but one another way that you can use it is for getting your children to sleep. So we've got a little example of one which is about sleep this time. So whoever wants to have a go at this one, if they want a nice relaxing one, and this is called Where Do You Sleep? Where do you sleep? Do you fly? Do you sleep flying through the air like a bird? Do you sleep standing like a giraffe, or an elephant, or a horse? Do you sleep swimming in the sea like a dolphin? Do you sleep upside down like a bat? Do you sleep in a circle like a dog or a hedgehog? Wherever you sleep, be warm and cosy and comfortable. Night, night, sleep tight, we love you. We will see you in the morning. Yeah, I thought that was a rather sweet one that I found today. So 
Um, another one, another thing that you could do with the story massage is to look at um, obviously at the motion um, at, at the moment things are, are quite challenging for people um, but looking at emotional things and doing stories with emotion in them so we will just do a quick one just to show you an example of that and this one's called happiness uh, and this was done by Gemma Brownie so you ready Rosie yeah happiness is something if you if you give it away, you give it away, you give it away. Happiness is something if you give it away. Then it comes right back to you. It is like a magic penny. Hold on tight and you won't get any. Lend it, spend it, give it away then it comes right back to you. A hug is something, if you give it away, give it away, give it away. A hug is something, if you give it away, then it comes right back to you. Oh, it's like a magic penny. Hold on tight and you won't get any. Lend it, spend it, give it away. Then it comes right back to you. Love is something you, if you give it away, if you give it away. You give it away. Love is something, if you give it away, then it comes right back to you. Oh, it's like a magic penny. Hold on tight and you won't get any. Lend it, spend it, Give it away, then it comes right back to you. Thank you very much for letting me give you a story massage there, Rosie. So those are some examples of some massages that you can do. So, as I say, you can do them over clothes, which makes it a really sort of accessible thing to do. But if you're doing it with your own child at home, Especially if you wanted to do it as a part of a bedtime routine and you wanted to make it even more relaxing, you could do that lying in bed on straight onto the skin. Um, like with any other massage, you could use massage oil and you could do, the, do those strokes um, with massage oil. If it was bedtime, you could also add in a little bit of um, lavender into that uh, massage oil and that would be really relaxing. The other way of doing it, if you wanted to do it on top of the pyjamas but wanted that extra sort of relaxing atmosphere, was you could get um, one of these cold air diffusers and you could diffuse some really nice relaxing oils in there. So for relaxation you've got, as I say, you've got the lavender. With the oils I use, there's one, the blend that's called Serenity, which is uh, the relaxation blend and it's got things like lavender and vetiver and sandalwood, which are all really sort of calming oils which is, um, which is pretty much my go-to as a, a sort of a sleep blend. Um, that's really good to put in your diffuser sort of about half an hour before bedtime and then you can go and do your, you've got that lovely relaxing atmosphere to do your massage in. But if you wanted to do um, a massage that was more aimed at something you wanting your children to learn, again, you could have um, some oils in your diffuser. Rosemary um, is a really good one for memory. So rosemary, some uh, peppermint to, to sort of wake you up a little bit and some lemon in there. That would be a really nice blend to do for that. And what you can also do if you're doing something for, for, for learning, which I might do a little bit more on at another time, is that you can do an association with children between a certain smell and what they're learning. So if they're learning maths, you could have make even a little a roller ball, but so that they uh, of something like uh, wild orange. Um, and you could use that for maths and then have a different fragrance when you're learning a different uh, subject um, 
and then that smell they'll then associate with that subject and it will help um, recall those memories. So that's just a few ideas with that. So for people looking for activities to do with their children whilst they're at home and, and not at school, you, could, you can, from the Story Massage website, you can buy these stickers, but obviously you could just draw these yourself as well. But the stickers are great because you can then write your little story and put your stickers on the end. But that would be a really nice project. So if you thought of something that your, your child was particularly interested in or something you're doing a little project on, so let's say um, you maybe you're planting some things at the moment, being that time of year, um, you could then look at making a little story massage about your, your, the things that you're growing and even create a lovely picture as well. So turn, turn it into a sort of a project where you're doing various different things. So you've got your um, story that you're writing. I'd love to see a lovely picture that went along with that, um, along with the actual activity that you're doing. So it's another way to get children writing, but in a really sort of fun way. Um, so if anybody wants any more information on any of this, that, any of the things that I've talked about today, um, wants a few more ideas about stories and massage and uh, that sort of thing, just feel free to message me. Uh, and other than that, have a lovely weekend. Thank you.